Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? We have spent the night, nice relaxing evening it was, um, watched a bit of TV, had a good meal, that sort of thing, and now we are refreshed and ready to go. So we are harvesting, well we, I've started the harvest, I'm not going to be spending a huge amount of time sort of worrying about this, the combine is just going to work away and we will ferry the grain over to the store over there and we won't really be doing very much with it we've got other things to do but we're going to be based just over there getting the sawmill set up and then hopefully getting some trees and stuff cut and i have got the logging trailers over at the um the logging site that we've been using down over there at the moment Although I am thinking that perhaps we'll bring the trailers and the Ponzi Scorpion King back here and chop down some of these trees. I'd like to remove some of these trees here like I did in the time lapse because they're so much better. It gives you so much more room and maybe some of those over there. So, you know, if we fell a load of trees around the yard, it will be a lot easier to move around here and we'll have a lot more access. So that is definitely on the cards and maybe around the big field over the end there, over field... Uh, what field is that? Um, oop, wrong button. There we go uh field 12 yeah the, around field 12 like down the end and that um there's a few trees down there we could do we're getting rid of some of those um so yeah my question for this week i have been planning to do about a hundred episodes on this map that was the last question i asked so now i'm asking again we're coming up to we're very close to episode 80 now do you want me to continue with the plan of stopping this series at around episode 100 and moving on to a new map or do you want me to stay here until at least episode 150 it's your vote it's your game head in the comment section down below let us know what you want and why and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner now then uh ooh, okay i nearly got run over there let that one carry on with what he's doing we've got to move a couple of things out of the way down here and then we can set the sawmill up i'd like to put the sawmill down here in the yard and unfortunately there is no way to get rid of these few shrubs here i was thinking oh maybe we could cultivate up the grow we'd have to plow it first but it doesn't get rid of these shrubs so these shrubs are here to stay but you can plonk the sawmill down on top of this and it doesn't really look that much out of place once you've done it and you can still access everything all the way round. so that is what we're going to do first um well actually it's not the first thing we're going to do what we're going to do first is we're going to get these wood chips here and we're going to dump them on the floor no we're not no we are going to move this stuff out the way so let's come over here and leap into this one this one is still under lease however it's so cheap on the leasing costs that I haven't really been worrying about it. I don't think it's anything that we need to concern ourselves with. We will stick with leasing it and not concern, not be worried about it at all. I'm going to need to get to that sump grinder at some point because we've got, we're going to be chopping down these trees. Um, I won't worry about it right now. All I need to do at the moment is move that loader arm there, which is for this tractor, and the, um, the water bowels are there. Actually, I think I've got fuel in that one, haven't I? That was, our, that was our little fuel station that we set up. So let's just drive into there and set that one up. And lift him up. I don't think I've got a bucket for this one. Um, although I don't think I'm going to need a bucket. We've got the pallet forks. And the pallet forks we will want. Um, what else am I going to need? I'm going to need a log grab, aren't I? Oh, hang on. I want to pick up that trailer. I'm gonna, Yeah, I'm going to need a log grab. Helper D has a nearly full grain tank. That one can wait just a moment. Let's pull this one out of here. And we'll set the fuel bowser up somewhere else. You can't use... This is the one thing with a sawmill is you can't use fuel in the sawmill for the fuel. You need fuel for the sawmill. Um, but you've got to have it with wood chips, um, with wool pallets, or there was something else. I can't remember what it is. But I don't think you're allowed to just use fuel, which is... I think a little bit of a jolly nuisance, but uh, there's not a lot that we can do about that. So let's just back in here and stop there a minute so that that one's out of the way. Oops. And we've got that placeable there, but I don't think that's going to be in the way either. So now we want to put our sawmill down. So if I back up here a little bit so that I'm out of the way slightly, and $200,000 this is going to cost us. Now these here are actually quite cheap. And I've been told that in order to get the most out of the sawmill, you need to use that as well. Um, it really makes the pallets worthwhile. Otherwise, it's kind of not really worth it. Um, but if we go to this one, and here is our mill. Now then, we need to be able to access 
the the end here but I don't think we need to be able to access the other end so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna need to spin that one round um, that piece out the that's now facing towards the fence we need to be able to access that uh, we need to be able to access oh I think we've got to get into the side here I think the only bit that we don't really need to access is over here but maybe it'd be better if we put it down this end I actually you know what it might be it might be better if we were to put it here um, so that we could sort of get round it a little bit easier because I was thinking to sort of put it here right across the middle and we'd be able to get access on all sides that we needed to but then you got those shrubs in the way and I don't really want them in the way um, and of course you've got the, the, the like the passageway in the middle I don't want that being sort of covered up with shrubs maybe if I put it here like this so you can't I don't think if we put it here I don't think you'll be able to see any of the shrubs sort of showing through it um, let me move over a bit and spin my camera round this is this is where it gets a little bit tricky you've got to, you, you to be able to line everything up dead straight if I come over here now I'm kind of lined up reasonably straight with this uh, if I put it there I don't want if I if I plonk it here I don't want any of the shrubs that we've got in the middle showing through anywhere if I mean there it's going to show through I think here we should be okay um, nope there's a little bit too far all right, let's try it. We've committed. We have just committed $200,000 to this. And we do have it showing through ever so slightly right there. But I can live with that. That is something we can live with. We've got a full grain tank over there. This is where you've got to put the logs in for coming in. Um, and you come around here. This is where the wood chips come out. The excess wood chips come out. That there is where you get your pallets of completed lumber. That's where they come out. And so here I'm assuming is where you tip the um, the wood chips that you're going to be putting into the machine. So let's go and tip our wood chips a minute. $200,000 that's cost us. Where are we going to put all of our beekeeping stuff? Um, we need a flat. We, I think we need somewhere flat. Although... You do need somewhere like dead flat for the sawmill. That's one sort of slight issue with the sawmills. You can't, it doesn't like build ramps up on the sides to help you with um, putting it in slightly more rough places. Uh, but the sort, the bee stuff might, you, we might be able to get away with that. I'm certainly hoping that we can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come, do you have to drive right in or do we get a tip message? Do we, what, what do we get? Let's, um, let's bring it to this and Right, I'm not getting any kind of tip message at the moment. I think this is where we've got to put it. I don't think we put it in the end one. Actually, I'll tell you what. Let's just take a walk around it while we've got the help up. It should then tell us what we've got to put in, shouldn't it? Um, if I go here... Oh, that's just enter into the tractor. I don't want to worry about that. Toggle map size. There's nothing here. Um, nope, nothing on that one. Right, so we don't really have... Ah, you've got the screen here. So you've got fuels, and you've got logs, and then you've got products, wood chips, board, pallet, info, fuel, empty. Right, well, we don't have any logs in it either, so let's just turn that off. I'm assuming that we are trying to tip it in the right place. Maybe we've got to go in a bit further. Let me try... Oh, I can't drive in. Can I just tip? Doesn't la It doesn't like me just tipping there. Let me... I'll tell you what, let me unhitch that trailer there and let's just concern ourselves with this one. We might have to force tip it rather than just tip. I didn't think that it would be over here. Um, no, there's no tip, no tip available there. It's not going to let me do that. And I can't see that it would be in either of the others. You've got one there, you've got one there and you've got a screen up above that one. Um, and it might be that we've just got to drive in. I got to, I got to, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't want me to do it though, does it? Let me try going fast. We can do this. Oh, there we go. Ah, so you do actually have to get inside to be able to tip. Um, how far do we have to get? Oh, and now the tip has stopped. Right. If I tip here, it's going to mess it right up, isn't it? It's not going to like that. Oh no, I, I tip sideways. Oh, maybe that's why. Because I was trying to tip side, I, I, 
No, no, no. <laughs> okay, I think I did that slightly wrong. I don't think it was supposed to work like that. Let's try going sideways on this one. And, um, yeah, approaching it from this. There we go. It's just the tip side of it. That's all. Because I was going... Now it's tipping straight forward. Right, I, I, I don't really understand. But anyway, we've got 8,500 there. Let's go round to the screen a minute and see what this one is saying. If we take a look at the screen, you've got to press F1 to bring it up. Info logs empty. Fuels at 85. So it takes 10,000 litres of wood chips there. And logs are empty. So we need logs on here now. Oop. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to press F1. Um... Before I do that, what I want to do is get this one and hitch it back onto that trailer. And I want to empty out that trailer. Although I don't think I'm going to be able to fit all of those wood chips in. I think we are actually going to be chipless. Yeah, there's there's not enough space to put them all in there. Um, I did want to use both of these for this next little task that I had in mind. So let's go and tip the pile over here. And then we'll come back to it so this one unload is we got an unload side on this or does it just default no we don't have an unload side which is a little unfortunate because i don't want it to unload on the wrong side let me just put it here right in the middle and oh uh, yeah see it's unloading on the wrong side typical okay that's fine we can live with that we'll um we'll have to sort of spoon it all back up again a bit later on so yeah what i wanted to do is I'm going to try and use this tractor and I don't even need to use the trailer. I don't need to use the trailer at all for this. I can just use the tractor for the um, moving the wood chips around if I set up a conveyor belt. And um, This is what I wanted to do. So I wanted to use this one because we're quite close by. I know this thing isn't very fast, um, but with the little trailer on the back, he will actually hold, I think, just about a tank full of grain off of this combine. So I think this is a perfect use for it. It's fantastic. I mean, if we jump into cab, look at the view. I can see perfectly. I can see absolutely perfectly. And I will need to just pull forward so that I can then get the trailer on the back to fill up. I don't like being in the cab. I really don't like in-cab view on in this game. Um, it just doesn't it doesn't feel right at all. So how much is a full tank on this one? I think it's 12,500. Oh, no, it's 10,570. So we, we're not even a full tank. We're not even a full trailer. Um, most of the front is full, but the rest of it isn't. Incidentally, if you do use this tractor on the map, um, you should be aware that the game itself class doesn't class it as a tractor. It classes it as a trailer, which I found out um, in yesterday's episode. I'll show you in a minute. Um, so I was hunting around for it. I was trying to find it on the, um, on the map. And I can find it anywhere. And eventually I realised, because I got the trailer bit turned off, and the game thinks it's a trailer. Oop, not that one. I want this one. And we go back to the main map. So, yeah, you look here. This is where I am, but it's not actually got anything coming up on it at all. Um, but you've got to turn on your trailers like that. I don't know why it's jumped me over there. And there I've turned on the trailers. Um, and there's that one if i turn the trailers off it disappears from the option so it doesn't register it as a tractor on the escape map on the on the menu um it registers it as a trailer even though you do buy it as a tractor you it's sold under the tractors section um the game still classifies it as a trailer rather than the tractor. There's a little peculiarity there which i thought was i actually thought that was quite interesting to be honest but um yeah so now what do I do? I'm going to leave this one right here. And then I'm going to go and get... I'm going to take this Tatra Phoenix here. I'll leave that trailer there. I will run over... We'll leave the logging trailers in the forest for now. Um, but what we will do is we will get the low loader. I will load up the Ponzi Scorpion King. And then I will bring both of them back here. And we'll cut some logs back here uh, for the sawmill. So we can start removing some of these trees. So there's some up the side there. There's this little patch of trees down the bottom of the field here, which will make it a lot easier to turn and sort things out once they've been removed and the stumps have been ground off. And we can start producing some pallets. The first pallet of wood that we produce, well, obviously, we're going to see if we can load it onto that trailer to see if the big pallets um, 
sort of recognizes the the board palettes or not um, be interested to find that one out and then the other one that we're going to do is i want to take the palette oh because you can only sell them in the default game you can sell them at a wood chip sell point so we'll take one over and we'll see how much we get for one palette and then obviously the rest of it we're hoping to be able to put it into um uh, hang on i want to stay here don't i so i can go get the, the the machine um yeah we're hoping to be able to put the rest of it into the slow bee pack so we're going to be doing some beekeeping um and i did spend a lot of time talking about beekeeping quite some time ago um and i'm not sure if i've got anything else i can say about beekeeping uh who am i kidding i i can talk for hours about absolutely nothing so i'm if i'm given a particular subject i'm sure i can go with it so yeah we, we'll talk about beekeeping as well at some point right i will get this back over to the yard and then we can see about getting some trees cut up i'm quite deliberately going this way because i want to take it across the um the railway track purely to see if it will hang up or not because sometimes it does there we go crunch every time if you move that in a bit it usually is able to get across it's only if you've got it extended it then gets caught up on there it doesn't look like there's a lot of room for it to get caught up on but it still does it so one minor annoyance with this particular map is the way that it gets hung up on the um the railway track there I do keep getting told off by various people for calling it a railway track because that is what I call it here in the UK. I've always called it a railway track. Apparently, if I'm in the States, it should be a railroad track. Um, I'm not quite sure why it's a road, but there we go. Um, that is what I keep getting told. So I will try to call it a railroad um, rather than a railway. But, uh, yeah, it's it's a force of habit, like so many things. I've been doing it a certain way for um, over 30 years, and it's a long habit to break. It really is quite a long habit to break, that is. Now then, we've got the combine is full again, so we will run up there with our little Fent GT255 and go and unload it. I think this is a perfect use for this tractor. Um close to the is is close to the grain storage so we we're not having to worry about it when we're up the top field um we're not going to want to be using this however um i wonder if we could still do it and just build a ramp up there somewhere so that we could park a big trailer underneath it and then run up the the ramp with this and unload into it that could work there is a possibility that could work or we could unload it onto the ground and then load it back up into something else because i frequently see in the states in videos grain being stored on the ground and they empty out the combines and they um, have temporary storages on the ground in different places which is then picked up later on because the you get so little rain and also i've been told that when you pyramid the grain up in a great big heap if it does rain on it it's only the very outside layer of the grain that gets spoiled because the way the grains lie um it tends to be that the um, the grain of the water sort of runs down the outside of it. So it sort of forms a bit of a crust over the outside and all the rest of the grain is perfectly safe and fine. Um, so yeah, it's just certainly something that I would look into. I, I'm not completely ruling that idea out. That could be quite interesting to, to have a great big storage of grain up top. Um, I know we would then probably have to just take the conveyor belts up to to load it back up again although i'm thinking that perhaps if we could you know the um oh what's it called i have to have a look here you got the uh, for the sugar beet harvesting ones yes this one the terra Felis 2 eco um that one there but it only picks up sugar beet but i have seen a modded one around it runs faster than that one um so it will actually load the things up quicker but it's also been modded to take uh lots of other things i know that it could i don't know if it's been modded to take everything but it certainly takes all the grains um so you could we could like pile the grain up on the ground and we could use that to load it all up and for those of you who say well that wouldn't be realistic would just fall through i have seen a machine like it being used for grain um whereas it's not rollers on the front and it's not chain link um conveyors it's uh, conveyors like the conveyors we've got in the game which is like a, a just a big belt and so is the infeed on it um it's designed to take grain but it takes sort of everything um that could be a very very interesting way of doing it i, I i'm not ruling that out as a possibility by any means because i think that could be a really cool way of doing stuff um let me just change that over there we go 
Uh, I can't. I can't have both of them tipping at the same time. It's not letting me do it. That's a bit of a shame. I was. I was hoping to be clever and get both of them tipping at exactly the same time. It doesn't seem to want to let me do it. All right, that one's out, and tip the last little bit of that one out. There we go. And so we've got the scorpion back. We want to get a log, and we want to get that into our sawmill now. So let me just bring this one over here. We'll drive down to the end here. Um, we can come back and um, empty out the combine when we get the message again. Or we may even leave it until next time now, because we are starting to run out of time. What tree are we going to take first? I'm thinking... Or do, we, do we actually know what size logs we've got to use here? Let me stop right there. Um... We want to get this one off of the trailer, and then we're going to move the trailer out of the way. So let me just race over here, leap into this one. We'll unload you. I think we'll grab a tree over there, and we'll drag it back over, and we will cut it up. Um, we've got to find it. We might actually cut it up right next to the cell point so that we don't actually have to worry about getting a loader with a log fork on it today in order to move it. So we can just sort of see what the, the logs and the pallets do. I'll tidy up here a minute. And then um, we can see about getting a tree over here. Okay. And as many of you know, I have to do most of my recording for the first three episodes of the week all on the same day. Um, so I've done yesterday's episode and I've done today's episode sort of back to back. However, I have got a really sore throat today and I'm starting to struggle quite a bit. I've got a drink and various other bits. So there is... A very slight possibility this week that you won't get your regular three episodes I will only be able to do two I will obviously make it up to you um, later on because but obviously if my throat is too bad I'm not going to be able to talk um, so on Wednesday when I normally do a episode and I do a um, time-lapse I may not be able to do my regular episode I will have to see how it goes uh, because of my job and everything, obviously I can't do everything all at once. Um, so yeah, just giving you a little bit of warning, and I'm going. I'm not going to run to. I'm, I seem to basically do everything to 30 minutes these days, um, but I may not even be able to do that. So let's just bring this one round. I, I reckon if we put it here, it should be okay. I know, I know that like dropping it straight onto um, the rollers like this is probably not the most realistic way of doing this, but I think that it would be okay. I think we can do this just once. So let's just bring that one in and plonk. There we go. Really? There's the whole tree. Did it actually cut the tree or did I just have it take the whole thing all at once? Let's have a look. It's saying 6,200. Um, so we got some logs there. What have we got to do though? Have we, have we got to fill it right up or what? Oh, it's working. Um, right, so Brenstoff would be fuel, is it? Fuels, I guess. Um, holes would be the logs, I'm guessing. And at the moment, we've got Hackschnitzel. That would be, I'm guessing Hackschnitzel is wood chip. So Brenstoff is fuel. Bretta Palatin would be the, the pallet of lumber. And Hackschnitzel would be wood chips. Um, no, I... Ooh! Oh, there's a whole animation! It's been right behind me and I didn't even see... Oh, this is fantastic! I'm really glad that I didn't leave it so that there were um, some branches up through here because that would look really weird. Right now, that would be looking very, very peculiar indeed. But that is working absolutely fantastic. Um, let's just run around here and see what else we've got. Um, wood chips have started to come out. We've got 74 litres of wood chips. A little tiny bit there. So how often does it update the the section? We've got a whole fat pallet here. Ooh, 70. Oh, that is brilliant. So I guess you just kind of leave it working. Ah. And how long does it take to process a pallet of wood? And what happens? Have you got to come and get the pallet of wood when it's done? We've got 149 litres of wood chips there. Um... How much wood chips do we get out compared to what we put in? Do we Are the wood chips kind of self-sustaining with the, the logs or not? It's another interesting one to see. Okay, I'm officially impressed with this. I really, I, I'm loving this. I'm quite impressed with this sawmill. And kind of disappointed I've never, ever used it before because this was available in FS15. 
And yeah, there's so many things that I just haven't used yet. This game is phenomenal. I mean, look, let me show you something here a minute. That is my timer. I'm running out of time and my voice is, my throat is getting worse. So I'm, I really am running out of time. Let me show you something here. 78 hours played on this map. And I think we were roughly the same, about 80 hours played on the Sosnyovka map. So that was 160 hours. I've got 260 hours play time on my time lapse map at the moment. So that is 360, 420 hours. And that doesn't include testing on other maps and stuff I've done on other maps. And we've also done a bit on Whatair Valley as well. So easily 450 hours of play time here in FS17. Um, FS13, I think I racked up something like 500 hours in total on that game, maybe a bit longer. That was just playing it for myself, that wasn't doing anything else. FS15 was hundreds and hundreds of hours, I've no idea how much. At a very rough guess, with all the time-lapse stuff that I did in that game, I would say you're probably looking at nearly a thousand hours in total in FS15. Um, so yeah, and all that time... There's still so many things that have been available. This was available in FS15. I never got round to it. I just don't get round to it all. And that is what I love about this game. There's just so much stuff out there. The community is just so incredible producing all this amazing, amazing stuff. Um, and, yeah, you, you don't even get to see it all. You, you, you just can't physically get round it all. And that is something that I... I just can't begin to describe how awesome that is for me. Um... Yeah, so anyway, that's that's our sawmill running. We'll, we'll run up here and we'll get a little bit more grain out of this combine as it's waiting for us. Um, and once again, the reason that I go on a lot about not abusing the mods, if it's available on Mod Hub, download it from Mod Hub. For goodness sake, don't go and get it from another website if it's on Mod Hub. And if you see it on Mod Hub, um, and you see it on another website, if there's a way to report it, then report it, because it's been stolen. It shouldn't be there. That is the kind of thing that discourages the modders from making these incredible things that we get to use, right? Um, so, yeah, if, if you see... Avoid those websites that steal mods, right? And Mod Hoster, that one is kind of a grey area. Some modders like it, some modders don't like it. Um, but it does... They're very good at when you report a mod, um, getting it removed, and also the community in general. If they see something that isn't um, by the person who's uploaded, it gets downvoted massively. So if you see something that's got one star, chances are it's a stolen mod um, and shouldn't be on there. Um, so yeah, the, the rating system is really good for sort of keeping up to date with what's good and what's not over on Mod Hoster. But in general, um, please just avoid using the dodgy sites avoid using anything like that that is stealing modders um material and sticking it elsewhere we don't want that we want those modders to be happy we want all the modders to be treated fairly and if they've got something on the actual mod hub on the in-game one they can get paid for the downloads so if you're getting it from somewhere else they're not going to get they're not going to make their little bit of extra money it's not a full-time living by any stretch it's a small amount of money that they can get paid as sort of an incentive to keep doing what they're doing. And which is fantastic. They're, they're spending hundreds, if not thousands of hours of their time providing us with some very incredible content. And I think the least they deserve is a small stipend for their time. Um, so, yeah, do not, please do not go to other websites. Um, I know I have in the past provided links to some of those websites in my ignorance um that is something that will not be happening ever again on this channel i can promise you that the only reason it did happen in the past was because i didn't realize that it wasn't original links um and i do my homework now if ever i use next tunnel mod i really do my homework to try to find the original download link um and if you think i have mistakenly supplied the wrong link somewhere for goodness sake, let me know, because I can't do anything about it if I don't know. But anyway, I'm running out of time, so if you would like this series to run to just 100 episodes, that is my weekly question, then let me know. If you would like me to run it longer and go to 150 episodes at least, 
um, then again, let me know. It is your vote, it's your game. Do you want me to run this stop at 100 episodes and move to a new map, or would you like me to go longer and go to a minimum of 150 episodes here in Goldcrest Valley? Uh, head into the comment section down below, let everybody know what you want, and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. If you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give me a like, and if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me, get them to come and watch as well, that would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching, this is Frithgar, goodbye, and see you later.